Today our topic is the nature and history of Constitution of the United States. Briefly we can say the nature of the US Constitution allows a balance between states rights and strong central government. The US executive is the president, the US legislature is the congress composed of the senate and the house of the representatives and the US judiciary is headed by the supreme court. And briefly in two sentences we can focus on the history of the United States constitution the constitution of the united states established america's national government and fundamental laws and guaranteed certain basic rights for its citizens it was signed on september 17 1787 by delegates to the constitutional convention in philadelphia on october 27 2009 and the purpose and nature of the us constitution the two purposes are very very important constitution dictate permanent framework of the government to form a more perfect union to establish justice and ensure peace of the nation constitution provide principles how the government can run itself following the rules and laws written in the constitution of each state keeps them balanced and what events influence the us constitution both have important predecessors our constitution was influenced by the magna carta and the english bill of rights of 1689 and the declaration by john locke's writings on the consent of the government and by a document close to home for thomas jefferson the draft version by george mason of virginia's declaration the us constitution gave the federal government more power and allowed them to effectively levy tariffs laws were passed and they had to be followed The US Constitution influenced the constitution constitutions of many nations it's one of the oldest constitutions in the world what influenced the founding fathers the single most important influence that shaped the founding of the united states comes from john locke a 17th century englishman who redefined the nature of the government the duty of that government is to protect the natural rights of the people which Locke believed to include life, liberty and property. Who were the Enlightenment thinkers who, whose philosophies have influenced the Constitution? Briefly, we denote Enlightenment philosophers John Locke, Charles Montesquieu and John Jacques Rousseau all developed theories of government in which some are even all the people would govern these thinkers had a profound effect on the american and french revolutions and the democratic governments that they produced which were those events erected before the us constitution was written On April 11, 1764, Sugar Act. On April 11, 1765, Quartering and Stamp Act. On April 19, 1775, Start of the Revolutionary War. On July 4, 1776, Declaration of Independence. November 15, 1777, Articles of Confederation was were created. John On January 1, 1780, rebellions. January 1, 1786, Annapolis Convention. August 26, 1786, Shays Rebellion. What are the five purposes of the Constitution? Goals of the Constitution: 
with the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this constitution for the Union of America. What is the meaning of the constitution? The system of fundamental principles according to which a nation, state, corporation are the like is governed. The document embodying these principles, initial capital letter, constitution of the United States, the physical character of the body as to strength, health, etc., he has a strong constitution. How the Enlightenment influenced the constitution? The age of the Enlightenment influenced many legal codes and governmental structures that are still in place today. A huge proponent of the Enlightenment, Montesquieu, suggested the theory of the separation of parts in order to obtain a political system of checks and balances and promoting order and equality. Do citizens have the right to overthrow the government? In political philosophy, the right of a revolution, a right of a rebellion, is the right, a duty of the people of a nation to overthrow a government that acts against their common interests or threatens the safety of the people without cause. Who are the twelve founding fathers of the constitution? Those are the twelve people, John Adams, John Dickinson, William Findlay, Benjamin Frank Franklin, Alexander Hamilton, John Jay, Thomas Jefferson, and Richard Henry Lee. James Madison, Thomas Pine, George Washington, and James Wilson. There were several other key players of their time, structured the democratic government of the United States and left a legacy that has shaped the world. The constitution of the United States <clears throat> in the perspectives of history reflects a more perfect union, the creation of the U.S. Constitution, the Articles of the Confederation, the Delegates, the Virginia Plan, the New Jersey Plan, Hamilton's Plan, the Great Compromise, the, and the First Draft, Bill of the Rights, and the document in which enshrined the rights of the people of the state. Colleague. <laughs> May 25, 1787, freshly separated dirt covered the cobblestone street in front of the Pennsylvania State House, protecting the men inside from the sound of passing carriages and carts. Guards stood at the entrances to ensure that the curious were kept at a distance. Robert Morris of Pennsylvania, the financier of the revolution, opened the proceedings with the nomination. General George Washington for the presidency of the Constitutional Convention. The vote was unanimous. With characteristic ceremonial modesty, the general expressed his embarrassment at his lack of qualifications to preside over such an august body and apologized for an errors into which he might fall in the course of its deliberations. To many of these assembled especially to the small, boyish-looking 36-year-old delegate from Virginia, James Madison, the general's mere presence, boded well for the convention. For the illustrious Washington gave to the gathering an air of importance and legitimacy, but this decision to attend the convention had been an agonizing one. 
the father of the country had almost remained at home suffering from rheumatism despondent over the loss of a brother absorbed in the management of mount vernon and doubting that the convention would accomplish very much or that many men of stature would attend washington delayed accepting the invitation to attend for several months torn between the hazards of lending his reputation to a gathering perhaps doomed to failure and the chance that the public would view his reluctance to attend with a critical eye the journal finally agreed to make the trip james madison was pleased the determined madison had for several years insatiably studied history and political theory searching for a solution to the political and economic dilemmas he saw plaguing america the virginian slavers convinced him of the futility and weakness of confederacies of independent states america's own government under the articles of confederation madison was convinced had to be replaced in force in 1781 established as a league of friendship and a constitution for the 13 sovereign and independent states after the revolution the article seemed to medicine woefully inadequate with the states retaining considerable power the central government he believed had insufficient power to regulate commerce it could not tax and was generally impotent in settling commercial policy it could not effectively support a war effort it had little power to settle quarrels between states saddled with this weak government the states were on the brink of economic disaster the evidence was overwhelming congress was attempting to function with a depleted treasury paper money was flooding the country creating extraordinary inflation a pound of tea in some areas could be purchased for a tidy 100 dollar and the depressed condition of business was taking its toll on many small farmers some of them were being thrown in jail for debt and numerous farms were being confiscated and sold for taxes in 1786 some of the farmers had fought back led by Daniel Shays a former captain in the Continental Army a group of armed men sporting sovereign twigs in their hats prevented the circuit court from sitting at Northampton Emmy and threatened to seize muskets stored in the arsenal at Springfield although the insurrection was put down by state troops The incident confirmed the fears of many wealthy men that anarchy was just around the corner. Embellished day after day in the press, the uprising made upper-class Americans shudder as they imagined hordes of vicious outlaws descending upon innocent citizens. From his idyllic mount, Woman sat in Washington. road to medicine mm, wisdom and good examples are necessary at this time to rescue the political machine from the impending storm medicine thought he had the answer he wanted a strong central government to provide order and stability let it to be tried them he wrote whether any middle ground can be taken which will at once support a due supremacy of the national authority while maintaining state power only when subordinately useful the resolute virginia look to the constitutional convention to forge a new government in this mold the convention had its specific origins in a proposal offered by madison and john taylor in the virginia assembly that the continental congress be given power to regulate congress throughout the confederation through their efforts in the assembly a plan was devised inviting the several states to attend a convention at annapolis md in september 1786 
to discuss commercial problems. Madison and a young lawyer from New York named Alexander Hamilton issued a report on the meeting in Annapolis, calling upon Congress to summon delegates of all the states to meet for the purpose of revising the Articles of Confederation. Although the report was widely viewed as a usurpation of congressional authority, the Congress did issue a formal call to the states for a convention. To Madison, it represented the supreme chance to reverse the country's trend. And as the delegations gathered in Philadelphia, its importance was not lost to others. The squire of Gunstone Hell, George Mason, wrote to his son, The eyes of the United States are turned upon this assembly and their expectation raised to a very anxious degree. May God grant that we may be able to gratify them by establishing a wise and just government. The delegates to the constitutional formation were 74 who were appointed to the convention, of which 55 actually attended sessions. Rhode Island was the only state that refused to send delegates. Dominated by men, wedded to paper currency, low taxes, and popular government, Rhode Island's leaders refused to participate in what they saw as a conspiracy to overthrow the established government. Other Americans also had their suspicions. Patrick Henry of the following Red Glasgow Clock and the Magnetic Oratory refused to attend, declaring he smelt a rat. He suspected correctly that Madison had in mind the creation of a powerful central government and the subversion of the authority of the state legislatures. Henry, along with many other political leaders, believed that the state governments offered the chief protection for personal liberties. He was determined not to lend a hand to any proceeding that seemed to pose a threat to the protection. With Henry a absent, with such towering figures as Jefferson and Adams abroad on foreign missions, and with John Jay in New York at the Foreign Office, the convention was without some of the country's major political leaders. It was nevertheless an impressive assemblage. In addition to Madison and Washington, there were Benjamin Franklin of Pennsylvania, crippled by gout. The 81 year old Franklin was a man of many dimensions printer, storekeeper, publisher, scientist, public official, philosopher, diplomat, and ladies. Man, James Wilson of Pennsylvania, a distinguished lawyer with a penchant for ill-advised land jobbing schemes, which would force him late in life to flee from state to state, avoiding pro prosecution for debt. The Scotsman brought a profound mind steeped in constitutional theory and law. Alexander Hamilton of New York, a brilliant ambitious former I.D. camp and sat to Washington during the revolution who had, after his marriage into Sakaila, family of New York, become a powerful political figure. George Mason of Virginia, the author of the Virginia Bill of Rights, whom Jefferson later called the cat of his country without the avarice of the Roman. John Dickinson of Delaware, the quiet reserved author of the farmer's letters and chairman of the Congressional Committee that framed the articles, and Governor Morris of Pennsylvania, well versed in French literature and language with a flair and bravado to match his keen intellect who had helped draft the New York State's Constitution and had worked with Robert Morris in the finance office. There were others who played major roles. Oliver Ellsworth of Connecticut, Edmund Randolph of Virginia, William Patterson of New Jersey, John Rotteledge of South Carolina, 
एलब्रिज चेरी ऑफ मैसाचोसर्ट्स रोजर शर्मैन ऑफ कनेक्टिकट लूथर मॉर्टन ऑफ मैरीलैंड एंड द पिंक नेज चार्लिस एंड चार्लिस कोर्ट्सवर्थ ऑफ साउथ कोरोलिना फ्रेंकलिन वॉज द ओल्डेस्ट मेंबर एंड जोनाथन डैटन द ट्वेंटी सेवन ईयर ओल्ड डेलीगेट्स फ्राम न्यू जर्सी वॉज द यंगेस्ट द एवरेज एज वॉज फोर्टी टू मोस्ट ऑफ द डेलीगेट्स हैड स्टडी लॉ हैड सर्वड इन कॉलोनियल आर स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर्स आर हैड बीन इन द कांग्रेस वेल वर्स्ड इन फिलोसफिकल थेरीज ऑफ गवर्नमेंट एडवांस बाई सच फिलोसफर्स एज जेम्स हैरिंगटन जॉन लॉक एंड मॉन्टेस्क्यो प्रॉफिटिंग फ्राम एक्सपीरियंस गेंड इन स्टेट पॉलिटिक्स द डेलीगेट्स कंपोज एन एक्सेप्शनल बॉडी वन दैट लेफ्ट आर रिमार्केबली लर्न रिकॉर्ड ऑफ डिबेट फॉर्चुनेटली वी हैव रिलेटिवली कॉम्प्लीट रिकॉर्ड ऑफ द प्रोसीडिंग्स थैंक्स टू द इन डिफेटिगेबल जेम्स मेडिसन डे आफ्टर डे द वर्जीनियन सेट इन फ्रंट ऑफ द प्रिजर्डिंग ऑफिसर कंपाइलिंग नोट्स ऑफ द डिबेट्स नॉट मिसिंग अ सिंगल डे और अ सिंगल मेजर स्पीच ही रिटर रिमॉक दैट इज सेल्फ कन्फाइनमेंट इन द हॉल विच वॉज ऑफन ऑपरेसिवली हॉट इन द फिलोडोल्फिया समर आलमोस्ट किल्ड हिम द सेशंस ऑफ द कन्वेंशन वर हेल्ड इन सीक्रेट नो रिपोर्टर्स और विजिटर्स वर परमिटेड ऑल द मैनी ऑफ द नेचुरली लाक्वेशस मेंबर्स वर प्रोडेड इन द पब्स एंड ऑन द स्ट्रीट्स मोस्ट रिमेन सरप्राइजिंगली डिस्क्रीट टू दो सस्पिशियस ऑफ द कन्वेंशन द कर्टन ऑफ सीक्रेसी ओनली सर्व टू कन्फर्म देयर एंगजाइटीज लूथर मॉर्टन ऑफ द मैरीलैंड लेटर चोज दैट द कंस्पिरेसी इन फ्लोडोल्फिया नीटेड अ क्वाइट ब्रीडिंग ग्राउंड थॉमिस जेफरसन रोड जॉन एडम्स फ्राम पैरिस आई एम सॉरी दे बिगेन देयर डिलिब्रेशन बाई सो अबोमिनेबल a precedent as that of tying up the tongues of their members there was also virginia plan hamilton plan and new jersey plan the great compromise are so crowding into this complicated and divisive discussion over representation was a nassau division over the method by which slaves were to be counted for purposes of taxation and representation on july 12 oliver ellsworth proposed that representation for the lower house be based on the number of free persons and three fifths of all other persons a euphemism for slaves in the following week the members finally compromised agreeing that direct taxation be according to representation and that the representation of the lower house be based on the white inhabitants and three fifths of the other people with this compromise and with growing realization that such compromise was necessary to avoid a complete breakdown of the convention the members then approved senate equality roger sherman had remarked that it was the wish of the delegates that some general government should be established with the crisis over representation now settled it began with the crisis over representation now settled it began to look again as if this wish might be fulfilled for the next few days there in the city of brotherly love although insufferably muggy and swarming with blue bottle flies had the clean scent of conciliation in this period of welcome come the members decided to appoint a committee of detail to draw up a draft constitution the convention would now at least have something on paper as nathaniel gorham of massachusetts john rotledge edmund randolph james wilson and oliver ellsworth went to work the other delegates voted themselves a much needed 10 day vacation during the adjournment governor morris and george washington 
rode out along a creek that ran through land that had been part of the valley and that valley was forge and cement 10 years earlier while morris cast for trout washington pencil pensively looked over the now lush ground where his freezing troops had suffered at a time when it had seemed as if the american revolution had reached its scent the country had come a long way so the first draft was constituted on august 6 1787 here was the article by article model from which the final document would result some five weeks later as the members began to consider the various sections the willingness to compromise of the previous days quickly evaporated the most serious controversy erupted over the question of regulation of congress the southern states exporters of raw materials rice indigo and tobacco were fearful that a new england dominated congress might through export taxes several damage the south's economic life cc pickney declared that if congress had the power to regulate trade the southern states would be nothing more than overseas for the northern states on august 21 the debate over the issue of congress became very closely linked to another explosive issue slavery when martin of maryland proposed a tax on slave importation the convention was thrust into a strident discussion of the institution of slavery its moral and economic relationship to the new government rotledge of south carolina asserting that slavery had nothing at all to do with morality declared interest alone is the governing principle with nations chairman of connecticut was for dropping the tender issue altogether before it jeopardized the convention mason of virginia expressed concern over unlimited importation of slaves but later indicated that he has favored federal protection of slave property already held this nagging issue of possible federal in- intervention in slave traffic which sherman and others feared could irrevocably split northern and southern delegates was settled by in mason's words a bargain mason later wrote that delegates from south carolina and georgia who most feared federal meddling in the slave trade made a deal with delegates from the new england states in exchange for the new englanders support for continuing slave importation for 20 years the southerners accepted a clause that required only a simple majority vote on navigation laws a crippling blow to southern economic interests the bargain was also a crippling blow to those working to abolish slavery congregationalist minister and abolition and abolitionist samuel hopkins of connecticut showed that the convention had sold out how does it appear that these states who have been fighting for liberty and consider themselves as the highest and most noble examples of zeal for it cannot agree in a political constitution unless it indulge and authorize them to enslave their fellow men these unclean spirits like frogs they are like the furies of the poets are spreading discord and exciting men to contention and war hopkins considered the constitution a document fit for the flames on august 31st a weary george mason who had three months earlier written so expectantly to his son about the great business now before us bitterly exclaimed that he would sooner chop off his right hand than put it to the constitution as it now stands mason despaired that the convention was rushing to settle the country with an ill-advised 
potentially ruinous central authority. He was concerned that a bill of rights ensuring individual liberties had not been made part of the constitution. Mason called for a new convention to reconsider the whole question of the formation of a new government, although Mason's motion was overwhelmingly voted out, down. Opponents of the constitution did not abandon the idea of a new convention. It was futilely suggested again and again for over two years. One of the last major unresolved problem was the method of electing the executive. A number of proposals, including direct election by the people, by state legislatures, by state governors, or by the national legislature, were considered. The result was the Electoral College, a master stroke of compromise, quaint and curious, but politically expedient. The large states got proportional strength in the number of delegates, the state legislature got the right of selecting delegates, and the House the right to choose the president. In the event, no candidate received a majority of electoral votes. Mason later predicted that the House would probably choose the president 19 times out of 20.